Good morning artists, good afternoon and good evening. I'm so happy to be back at school. I hope you guys are as well and I hope you guys had a great break. So if you guys remember before we left, um, March is actually National Women's Month and we've been learning about many different female artists and this week we'll be learning about Mary Cassatt. So Mary Cassatt is a really cool artist and painter from the Impressionist time period. So we haven't really talked about that, but Impression Impressionism is a time period in art from 1865 to 1885. Can anyone guess how long ago that was? <laughs> right, very, very, very long ago. So during this time, they didn't have TVs. And so what they did to get inspiration, they didn't have YouTube, so they went outside. So during, a lot of times during the Impressionism time, they went outside to the park or to their lake or looked outside their window and painted what they saw. And a lot of times they had to do this quickly because as we know, things change. So that's where Impressionism came from because they would do things really quickly and made an impression of a object. They didn't do it super detailed, although a lot of their work looks really detailed. It's really made quickly because the things are still lives, and still lives are things that we look and see. So if you guys look to your right, or if you look to your left, you if you were to sit there and draw what you saw, that would be a still life. So let's look at a little bit more of Mary Cassatt's work. Okay, so here is an example of Mary Cassatt's artwork. And this painting is called The Tea. It was made in 1880. And it's using oil paint. And um, a lot of times Mary Cassatt would make a lot of paintings that showed women doing typical everyday things like drinking tea or watching their children or reading or sewing. Those are things that these women did back in the day. They didn't, once again, they didn't have YouTube. They didn't make TikToks. This is what these women did. And so it, that's why Mary Cassatt's work is so appreciated because it shows us what women were doing in the 1880s. So here are two more paintings by Mary Cassatt. So on the left here, we have a painting called Ellen in a White Coat. This is actually a painting of her youngest brother's daughter, Ellen. And so this gives an example of um, how she painted things that she saw, right? She said, do you see her niece? Her niece isn't necessarily posing. And we all know that children can't sit very still. You guys like to move around. So she had to paint this very quickly. Even though we still have all of these details, right? You guys can see the child's face really well but she had to paint it quickly and then we also have this other painting here called in the lodge this painting is very very important because this was actually the first painting that she did that was displayed in the united states and it was shown in boston in 1878 and this is a really big deal because back in the 1880s a lot of women's Art work was not shown. Most of the time it was men's work who was shown and they had a lot of art shows. We know a lot of men like Picasso, Vincent Van Gogh, Leonardo da Vinci. All of these people or all of those artists were all men and they got recognized a lot. So it's very important that Mary Cassatt was able to get her artwork shown. Right? Awesome. So today to celebrate Mary Cassatt, we are going to paint our own little hats. Well, we're not going to paint them. We're going to draw them. So if you notice in all of our pictures, <laughs> all of the women wore hats, which is very important in the times, um, even in this photo as well. This woman has on a hat. In the 1880s, hats were the thing. These ladies love, love, love hats. So we're going to make our own drawing of hats okay okay so what we're gonna make today is our hats so one thing that I want you guys to be mindful of from now on 
Um, I really want us to put the name of the artist that we're talking about at the bottom of our paper, as well as your name too, okay? So I want you guys to keep that in mind, but here's the hat that we're going to be making. And today you're going to need a glue stick, crayons, scissors, um, a pencil if you have it, or a black marker. Um, if you have colored markers, that's fine. You're gonna need some sort of color, guys. Everything needs to be in color. Um, and if you don't, I want you guys to use what you have, but I want you to try your best. You're gonna need white paper and black paper as well, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. Okay guys, let's go ahead and get started and draw our hat. So we're gonna draw our hat on our white paper. You guys can use a pencil if you have it. I'm gonna use my black marker so you guys can see. And then I'm gonna leave this hat here if you want to copy that. But keep in mind, don't draw the flowers. We're gonna draw those on the side, okay? So first to draw my hat, I'm gonna start with a arch remember we talked about these arches and I'm going to make it kind of big and fit in the middle of my page all right we ready so I'm gonna make an arch going up and across look at that beautiful so now on the corners of my hat I'm gonna go all the way around to make a brim I'm gonna go all the way I try my best to connect that line. There we go. Now, now we're going to add a couple things on our corners. If you guys want to add some different designs to your hat, so let's think. We could draw. Hmm, what are some things that go on top of hats? Feathers, or if you want to do a bow. Or if you want to do some flowers, that's up to you, okay? Um, if you want to do some sort of really big bow or design or a ribbon, you guys can draw that on the side. I'm going to cut them out. So what I'm going to do is draw a feather. So I'm going to do a curved line going up. And then I'm going to do two curved lines on the sides, okay? Watch me. And go up like that and then I'm gonna do the same thing kind of looks like a leaf right so then I'm just gonna do a couple lines going up the middle line okay and then you can add to make it really look feather like you can add some more lines going out to kind of make it look like a feather okay that's one way to draw a feather there's a few more but you guys, I want you to try your best and draw your own feather, okay? Um, I'm also going to draw a bow, okay? So let me show you guys. I'm going to do a big, almost teardrop, okay? Watch. I'm gonna draw a teardrop there. Then I'm gonna draw a teardrop on the other side, the best I can not to touch my hat. And I'm going to draw the same thing on the inside. And then I'm going to add my ribbons, right? So I'm just going to do some curly lines going down. And I'm going to do the same thing going back up. You see that? Now you guys can draw a flower if you want. You can draw one object if you want as well. And now, what we're going to do, we're going to stop, put our pencil down, and we're going to take some time to cut this out. All right, let's get our scissors, and let's get ready to cut out all around the black lines, okay? Once I finish cutting out my object, I'm going to set it to the side, okay? When you're cutting your feather, to really make a um, feather like, you can kind of cut like that. You can do little shortcuts around it 
to make a little feather like outline, right? Kind of tracing the little lines that I made. Because you know feathers have prickly little ends. So I'm just going in and I'm making short cuts on my feather. And you guys don't have to do this, okay? And then I'm going to come back in and cut like zigzags to give it like a feather texture. Once you finish cutting all of your shapes out, make sure you move them to the side and we're gonna clean up, okay? So let's take our extra. And for now, I know some of you guys can't really get up. Let's clean it up the best we can and put our trash into a ball and move it over to the side to make it easier to clean once we're done. Okay, guys, so now we're going to glue our hat onto our paper. So what I want us to do is we want to tilt our hat just a little bit in the middle. We don't want to just sit it there. Let's have some fun and tilt it up here, okay? So you guys all know how to use your glue sticks, right? You don't need to go crazy. You don't have to spin it all the way up. You just need a little bit of glue and you just need to go around the corner or the edge of your hat and then I like to make an X in the middle and carefully tilt remember we're tilting our hat I'm gonna place it here I like to use my hands my fist and spread it across and rub it make sure your hands are clean right and rub it I have a little oil on my hands but that's okay all right, and spread it here, and we're good. So now we have our hat in the middle of our page. And let's not forget about our add, our adding to our hat. We can add our bow here or in the middle. It's up to you guys, okay? You do not, your hat does not have to look like mine. So what I want to do, since I have, I'm gonna put my feather here. Ooh, feather and a bow. And then I'm going to put my bow. Where should I put it, guys? Uh, I don't like that. So I'm going to mix them. What if I put my feather and my bow together at the back, okay? So first, I'm going to glue my feather down. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put it around the best I can. This is smaller, so I don't need as much glue. So I'm going to stick my feather down, same thing, with my fist and rub it down. And I'm going to get my bow. I'm going to carefully put my glue on the big parts. And I'm going to try my best on the thin. I'm not going to put too much glue down there because I don't want to get glue everywhere. And I'm going to press it down with my fist. And boom. So now, remember we talked about adding your name at the bottom of your page. So I want you guys, if you have a white crayon, since we're using black paper, I want you guys to write Mary Cassatt. So that's M-A-R-Y, Mary K 
capital C A S S A T T. And then we're going to write our own name on the right. So you should write your name. I'm going to write my name, Ms. Johnson. Okay. So now we're ready to color in our hat. So if you guys would like to, you guys can always add more designs to it. I want to add, since I did a ribbon, I'm going to do a big ribbon going across the middle of my hat. And then we're going to color it in. Now, since we do have our white crayon, we can always add a face here if you guys would like. My younger kiddos, you guys do not have to, but if you would like to try, we can give it a try. So, we're going to add a silhouette. So a silhouette is the side of your face, right? So you can do a nose, a lip, the, just the shape of the lip, and then a chin. And it's gonna be like a bump, right? So, let's give it a try. So I'm gonna go down. I want my nose to be a little bit more round. I have a round nose. And then, and do a bump for a lip, another bump for the bottom of my lip. Gonna go in a little bit, I'm gonna make a chin, I'll come in, then I'm gonna draw my neck, and then I can go all the way down to the bottom of the page, and I'm gonna add a back part, a straight line in the back for the back of my neck. Ooh, I like it. And then, there you guys go. So now for your hat, you see that I have a bunch of different hats. And hats come in all different colors and shades. So you guys can color in your hat however you want. I want you guys to think about different patterns, different shapes that you can use, okay? And I want you guys to color in your hat however you want, okay? Okay guys, so, so we have our artist name on the left and we have our name on the right. You should have your hat glued down. You should have any added things that you wanted to add onto your hat. Um, and if you would like, you could have drawn your silhouette. Now, I really, really want to see what you guys create. So I am actually not going to color in this hat. I want to see what you guys can do Remember our patterns, remember color, remember lines, and remember shapes. Now, I did create this nice checklist, okay, for you guys. So let's read this off. This is how you get a 100, okay? Please remember that not everyone is gonna get a 100, and, but this is how you can. Number one, what are you creative? Is it unique? Is it detailed? Is it interesting? Did you push yourself to add more details? Is it neat? Being neat is very important. Is your paper all balled up and wrinkly? Did you use the correct paper? Is it old? You know, we wanna keep it nice and neat. Are your lines neat? Did you color inside the lines? Ooh. Is it colorful? Remember, we should have colors. Do you have colored markers, crayons, color pencils? Even if you're at home and you have paint, your artwork should be filled with color. If your work looks like this, that lets me know that you did not finish. This is not complete, okay? Everything needs to, I want the hat to be filled with color, okay? You don't have to color in the black paper. If you wanna add a design, you can, but I want this hat colored in. Is it complete? Is the space filled? Did you follow the assignment? Did you submit your artwork carefully, correctly and carefully, and did you give 100% effort? Here is how you can get a 100. I cannot wait to see what you guys make. And until next time, I will see you guys next week. Thank you guys so much. Y'all have a good day. Bye-bye and have fun.